Zach Baggins has made a career out of investigating the paranormal, having been involved with such shows as Ghost Adventures, Paranormal Challenge, Deadly Possessions, and Halloween Wars. He has used the success to fund his haunted museum in Las Vegas, which houses artifacts related to both the paranormal and the criminally insane. His collection has grown to an impressive size, bringing in consistent crowds, but perhaps some of these items should have been destroyed. Hello, I'm Andrew Boyd, and though Though a cursed doorway left me stranded in this dark dimension months ago, I haven't seen anything quite as terrifying as the top 5 horrifying items that reside inside Zach Bagan's museum. Number 5. Gacy's Clown Painting Gacy's Clown Paintings John Wayne Gacy was the notorious serial killer, operating out of Chicago from the late 60s until the late 70s. He would lure victims into his home with the promise of illicit substances. He would then trick the young men into putting on a pair of handcuffs, claiming that he was going to demonstrate a magic trick. He would then force himself on them, torture them, and finally asphyxiate them before hiding the remains in his crawl space. In the 11 years that he operated, he was responsible for the deaths of over 33 people before he was arrested on December 21st, 1978, and sentenced to execution by lethal injection. Gacy had appeared for years to be the perfect family man, being an active member of his community, and in a detail that the media became obsessed obsessed with, volunteering as a clown who would perform at parades, fundraisers, and children's hospitals. This was unrelated to his crimes, but was such an odd detail that the press dubbed him the Killer Clown. This apparently served as the inspiration for Stephen King's It, and since then, clowns just haven't been able to catch a break. While awaiting his fate on death row, Gacy took up painting, creating self-portraits featuring himself dressed as Pogo the Clown. He is believed to have created over 2,000 paintings in prison before his death in 1994. After this, his attorney auctioned the paintings off, with several of them being purchased and burned in a bonfire attended by the families of the victims. Of course, this just made the paintings that remained more valuable and rare, and they have been known to show up in auctions where they are purchased for tens of thousands of dollars by people with questionable morals and taste. Speaking of which, Zach Baggins purchased a few of Gacy's paintings and put them on display in his museum in a display case dedicated to the memorabilia related to the killer clown. However, despite his best efforts, he was unable to purchase Gacy's brain to add it to the exhibit. Number 4. Peggy the Doll A staple item in any museum focusing on ghosts and murder is a classic haunted doll. Robert the Doll is a classic, and the whole world has learned about Annabelle at this point. But Zack has a doll on display, which he claims puts them all to shame, and her name is Peggy. Peggy's story begins in 2015, when a paranormal investigator named Jane Harris received a call from a distraught woman who claimed to have purchased a doll at a garage sale that was causing her to suffer from a mystery illness and vivid nightmares. The woman locked the doll in her shed until Harris agreed to take the doll away with her. A couple days later, she became sick and unable to get out of bed. She started hearing strange noises and hallucinated while the doll was in the house. Peggy was examined by psychics who claimed that she was possessed by the spirit of a woman born in 1946 who had died of a respiratory illness and attached herself to the doll. Harris uploaded a video of the doll online, and almost a hundred viewers claimed to have become briefly ill after seeing the video. Zack soon purchased the doll, putting it on display in his museum, where guests are asked to sign a waiver before seeing it, absolving him from any liability should the guests experience horrible paranormal activity due to exposure to Peggy. Number 3. The Manson Blood Painting Charles Manson was the infamous cult leader who formed a group of mostly young women, teaching them that they were the reincarnations of the original Christians and that he was Jesus Christ. Manson began using his followers for extortion, taking a music teacher who they believed had inherited a large fortune hostage in his home and demanding that he join the cult and turn over the money. The man maintained that they were mistaken and Manson attacked him with a sword before having one of his followers finish the job. In the cult's most famous incident, Manson sent four family members to the home of Hollywood Hollywood actress Sharon Tate, with instructions for them to end the lives of Tate and the four guests who were
were staying with her. The next night, these family members were joined by three others and brought by Manson to the home of Lino and Rosemary LaBianca, where they broke in and tied up the two residents at Manson's instructions. He then ordered them to dispatch the victims and left. Although it hasn't been conclusively proven, the Manson family are believed to be responsible for at least 15 other deaths, with Manson himself claiming at one point that he was responsible for 35 total deaths. Manson was apprehended and remained in prison until his death in 2017. Even while in custody, he maintained a dedicated group of admirers, and after his death, his ashes were scattered at his funeral and an admiring artist gathered some of them up. The artist then used their own blood in order to paint a picture of the cult leader, using Manson's real ashes to fill in the eyes on the portrait. Zach Baggins purchased the painting and put it on display at his museum. When asked how he was sure that the ashes were authentic, he responded, My people were there at the funeral, and my people saw what went down because of course they were. Number two, the devil's rocking chair. In 1981, a young boy in Brookfield, Connecticut named David Glatzel began having vivid night terrors. As time went on, these nightmares began infiltrating his everyday life, with him seeing haunting figures such as an old man with a white beard and a man with big black eyes and animalistic features and jagged teeth who would sit in an old rocking chair and watch the boy. He then began engaging in bizarre behavior like kicking, biting, seizures, and marks of strangulation appearing on him out of nowhere. His family reached out to Ed and Lorraine Warren, and they concluded that David was possessed by a demon. Priests performed three exorcisms on David, which supposedly caused him to levitate. In the chaos, the boyfriend of Debbie, David's older sister, Arnie Johnson, confronted the demon and told it to leave the child alone and to take him instead. David made a full recovery, but the demon decided to take Arnie up on his offer. A few months later, Arnie stabbed his landlord to death, and upon apprehension claimed that the devil made him do it. His trial marked the first time in history that someone entered a plea of not guilty for reasons of demonic possession, although this plea was rejected. This story was loosely adapted into the third Conjuring film, which follows Ed and Lorraine Warren's involvement with the case. Lorraine Warren also claimed to have seen beasts sitting in the rocking chair, and not long after her death, Zack purchased the chair and put it on display. He released footage of the chair moving by itself and claims that the first night it was on display, guests began having vivid visions and passing out in front of the chair and causing five of his tour guides to burst into tears. Bagan had to close the exhibit for a while, but the chair is back on display for guests to be terrified by. Number one, Ed Gein's Cauldron. Ed Gein was a serial in Plainsfield, Wisconsin, living on the family property he had inherited until his crimes were discovered, the details of which captivated America due to their cruelty, violence, and disgustingness. Gein grew up with a brother, a frequently drunk father, and an overbearing religious fanatic of a mother. She was cruel and puritanical, constantly going on about the dangers of sin, carnal desire, and mocking and shaming her children, who rarely left the home for anything other than school. The family lived together until Ed's father died when Ed was 34. Four years later, while burning brush with Ed, his brother Henry got caught in a blaze and died, leaving Ed alone with his mother. He took care of his mother, never dating or going out with friends, in order to appease her until she passed away, driving Ed off the deep end. People in Plainfield started going missing, with suspicion eventually leading the police to Gein's home. They discovered a variety of horrible sights, like a skin lampshade, skull soup bowls, and various masks and items of clothing that Gein had constructed from his victims, as well as bodies that he had stolen from the local cemetery. A couple months later, Gein's property was sold at auction, where a woman purchased an old cauldron, thinking that it would make a good planter for her flowers. Years later, the woman's granddaughter was talking with one of Gein's old neighbors, who had been assisting the police with cleanup on the farm. He immediately recognized the cauldron as being the one he had seen years before, covered in dried blood and next to a vat of entrails. Ed Gein was of course the inspiration for classic horror movie characters like Norman Bates, Leatherface, and Buffalo Bill, but his real-life cauldron was put up for sale in an Ed Gein auction in 2015, where it was purchased by 
Zach Baggins, who put it on display at his museum. With that, another journey together is complete. The dark forces who run this evil dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to put you on display in their museum of horrors. I'm off to continue searching for a way out of this dimension so that I can get back home. But should I be unsuccessful, perhaps we will meet again soon, and I can regale you with more tales of the macabre and the disturbing here on Top 5 Scary Videos.